If you really want to enjoy this video, please watch it on the bigger screen, at least bigger than phone screen, because small phone screens are not enough for those larger landscapes of true north and Arctic. YouTube uh, today's video is an evidence and it should be motivation for all the parents those have young children that they can do the road trips and they can do the road trips far and how far maybe all the way to the Arctic Ocean that's what we did last year that was so amazing experience I want to share that experience with you guys in this video today and if you want to follow the whole series, whole episodes in the detail, then please do not forget to subscribe. And I am linking a, a, a playlist link up here. Click that link and then you will get all the videos from home all the way to the Arctic Ocean. If you are planning to do this trip, then uh, I will highly recommend Mile Post. Have it before your trip, read it and keep it along with you on the trip. And the second book I will highly recommend if you are doing Dempster Highway that is called Canada's Western Arctic. It has so much details about the highway and um, the communities along the highway and its culture and history. So you must have it read it before and keep it along with you on the journey. Third one is Travel Log of Stemster Highway. Keep watching this video. I have mentioned about that book when we reached at Tombstone Territorial Park. Our journey started from uh, Maple Ridge, BC. That is a beautiful town and it is very close to Vancouver, BC. Uh, so we started from the west coast and uh, uh, we started on the June 2nd and our first major destination was the Dawson Creek. Dawson Creek uh, is a town which has a big sign that you are entering world famous Alaska Highway. It has zero mile. Um, it is definitely a must stop for picture taking. That is a good landmark to start your, start your journey. And uh, from Dawson Creek, uh, our next stop was Fort Nelson. Uh, we stopped at Fort Nelson because uh, one of my good friends, he lives there and there is a very interesting museum. Uh, they carry some of the equipment which was used uh, for the construction of the Alaska Highway in those times like 1942 and they still have those old army vehicles there and a couple of uh, other things which were used uh, during, during the construction. Mancho Lake is not too far. Before you reach Mancho Lake you, ha you have to go through highest pass of Alaska Highway that is called Summit Pass and there is a Summit Lake as well. Uh, so you go through those mountains then you kind of get in the heart of the Canadian Rockies that is Mancho Lake. Mancho Lake is a very beautiful lake. It has green water surrounded by very beautiful mountains, amazing landscape, also have a resort and uh, there is also a gas station. So the, all the details are up here in this video about the Mancho Lake, why the water is green. Um, so it is a must stop, stay there for one or two days. Liard River Hot Springs, those are sulfur hot springs, very refreshing, it's worth having a dip there. So when you're passing by Alaska Highway, if you don't stop there, 
I will say your journey is not complete if you have not stopped uh, by uh, those amazing hot springs. There is a special episode about that one as well. The link is again up here. Surrounding area of the Laird River Hot Springs uh, has a lot of wildlife. Came across uh, uh, more than one bear and herds of bisons. That is so interesting to watch them so closely, but make sure, make your safe distance because bison and you, you can guess who is the winner. So that's why I never go too close to them. After driving a couple of hours uh, from Laird River Hot Springs, we entered Yukon. They have a very beautiful sign saying Yukon um, larger than life. So that is definitely a must stop. Just pull, up, pull over, uh, have a picture with that sign and then uh, carry on towards uh, Watson Lake. Watson Lake uh, has very interest, uh, interesting uh, signpost forest uh, which has uh, a history related to ready to do Alaska Highway construction. So link is again up here if you want to go over, uh, watch that detailed video about that. From Watson Lake we drove towards uh, Whitehorse and uh, before you reach the Whitehorse there is a very beautiful village that is known as Thessalian village. It is at the bank of uh, a very large water body and that is the largest water crossing of the Alaska Highway as well. That bridge is very interesting. Uh, it is a metal bridge when you go across it. You can hear the sound of metal when you drive over it because it's uh, if it's different sound than driving over a cement or the asphalt. From there, Whitehorse is not too far. We arrived there at midnight. Uh, we stayed overnight in the Walmart parking lot, uh, lot because we were too late to reach there. Next morning, uh, we moved to the RV park. Uh, we cleaned up, uh, restocked our groceries, uh, visited the visitor center that is very informative and the, the displays are amazing in their visitor center as well. So even when we were staying on uh, uh, in Whitehorse, uh, uh, I took kids to the wildlife preserve. Uh, it has a very interesting wildlife preserve. They have lots of uh, animals from north. Uh, uh, I made a detailed video about that preserve as well. The link is up here for that one if you want to go in detail. From Whitehorse, uh, a new leg of our, of our journey started. Uh, that was uh, Klondike Highway North. I have never driven high, uh, that highway before, so it was very interesting for us to hit that highway and then made it all the way to the Dawson City. Uh, but the interesting part is uh, when you go through that highway, uh, there are a couple of road houses uh, along the highway which were used uh, uh, during the gold rush for the travelers to stay uh, during their travels. And uh, there was one which was very uh, interesting and they made it a historical site, so we stopped there as well. Dawson city itself, it is very well kept city, very antique. I would say the visitor center is very informative and it looks like you have gone back to that period uh, of the gold rush. Uh, we also went there for gold panning on a claim. Uh, that was interesting, we never found anything, but we found a very small dirt piece of gold uh, after panning about maybe two hours. So it was fun for us, we did that. Um, from there, another leg, which is very interesting, and that was uh, a kind of dream come true for us, the Dempster Highway. That's what we wanted to do, that's, that, that's what it, it was all about.
hit the Dempster Highway, we stopped by the landmark, took a picture, then fill the gas gas. That is the most important part. Because once you fill the gas from the corner of the Dempster Highway and the Klondike Highway, the next gas station is 369 kilometers in Eagle Plains. After driving about uh, 72 kilometers on Dempster Highway, Tombstone Territorial Park, that is a must stop at least a day, maybe two or more. It depends what you want to do there. We stayed there for uh, almost uh, um, a day, full day, and then we did uh, a small hike or you can say walk in uh, those small uh, we can call it bushes or the trees of the tundra because they are they are not big trees They are that high or a little more high and then uh, But they are very old trees. So it was interesting. We did that uh, hike with the Klondike River Their interpretive center is very informative. They have very nice amazing displays and uh, Also do not get forget to get a, a log book of the Dempster Highway from them because that log book will make, make your journey more interesting because when you know like what is at what kilometer that is so interesting and it gives you a little brief history of uh, that region and uh, the information about uh, the geography step by step kilometer by kilometer so uh, grab it from them and make sure you return it to them on your way back because they, they recycle those books and they give the same books to the uh, next travelers as well. So that was Tombstone Territorial Park Campground, which is called Tombstone Mountain Campground. It has 36 uh, sites and it is 1034 meters above the sea level. Very nice place to relax for a day or two and explore the surroundings. And make sure if you are not stopping at this campground, then uh, try to get to the interpretive center before they close in the evening. That is about 5 p.m., but check the time before you leave uh, so you can get all the information uh, uh, about uh, Damster, uh, especially that travel log, which is very uh, good to have on your journey. And once you leave the campsite towards Inuvik, driving a little bit up the mountain, then you reach uh, to a viewpoint that is the best viewpoint of my lifetime, I can say. The panoramic view and uh, view of the Tombstone Mountains, wonderful, phenomenal. We stopped there and enjoyed the view for some time, took our pictures, and then we headed towards uh, Two Moose Lake, and then uh, uh, next was the Chapman Lake. Chapman Lake has a history connected with the construction of the Dempster Highway because in 1960s, Canadian government thought, okay, you know, we should not uh, build that highway any further and the construction stopped at the uh, at Chapman Lake. That is the largest lake along the, uh, along the Dempster Highway. But views are beautiful. Like, doesn't matter which direction, north, south, east, west, views are amazing. There is another interesting fact about Dempster Highway that it has a couple of airstrips on it. Like we shared the road with the airplanes. When we were driving on it, we never came across any airplanes, but uh, those sections of the highway, they are emergency airstrips and planes can land there. Uh, that is no stopping zone and it, it is very well marked areas with, uh, with the cones and the uh, orange markers along the side of it and uh, they are very well maintained and flat so watch for the flame planes if you're going through that area and uh, that is no stopping zone but that is so interesting to drive on those um, airstrips which are made for emergency landings So when you drive along the Red Creek, you can see that it is a different kind of water. It is mineral-rich water, and uh, the rock color is different. 
It uh, goes along the highway for 25 kilometers. We stopped for a bit, enjoyed that uh, colorful water and, uh, and the rocks, and then we carried on uh, uh, our journey onwards. We have stopped at the Dead Creek, which is uh, very rich in minerals and especially the sulfur. Along the Dempster Highway, it runs along the highway for about 25 kilometers from 168 kilometer onwards to the north. Yeah, look at this. Everything is colored in this creek. When we reached uh, Ochlevi viewpoint, I have no words to explain that view. And even my camera, that is not doing justice to those views. Standing up at that viewpoint, looking at that vast, huge landscape, I realized you know, like how vast it is and how, how small we are on this globe and how big are our egos. Doing this trip was uh, like going to the Mother Nature School and uh, I came back with so much gratitude and I want to go back and connect with that Mother Nature again and again and again. If not up in the north, then maybe somewhere else, maybe here. It could be anywhere, but uh, that trip kind of uh, opened our vision more to connect with nature. So. From there on, we carried on. Then we met a local resident, a big black bear. He was just walking along the highway and uh, we slowed down, we made a video and he never bothered us. He looked and walked away. We made a video, we laughed, smiled and we carried on. None of us uh, bothered each other. So that was a very interesting interaction. Before reaching Eagle Plains, uh, um, I guess before we arrived about that stretch, which, which was before Eagle Plains, that was very uh, slippery because I guess it rained before we arrived. We are about to reach uh, Eagle Plains, just about 20 more kilometers to go. Uh, the thing which I want to mention is after uh, Oglevia Ridge, uh, the road is pretty bumpy, like it is clear wide road, you can go faster, but it has a lot of loose gravel and uh, potholes, uh, uh, those can be deceiving when you're going fast. And uh, about 40 kilometers from Eagle Plains, uh, uh, I guess it rained before we arrived and uh, the road was slippery. and. This is, uh, I'm just taking it slow because you're like, a wrong brake application can uh, take you into a ditch or something. So you don't want to be off the road in this part of the world because uh, you don't know like when you will get the help. Uh, so just take it slow and uh, our part holds plus the slippery road that is, uh, not worth going faster. Eagle Plain is the gas station which is at 369 kilometer of the Dampster Highway just before uh, entering the Arctic Circle I guess about 34-35 kilometers before Arctic Circle so that has uh, Eagle Plain has uh, uh, I guess a mechanic shop um, a motel, a campsite and a uh, gas station. That's it. That's all they have. And uh, there is, I, I don't think there is any community there. Uh, so we filled up the gas and then we carried on. It was about uh, uh, 8 o'clock because we reached before the gas station closure. I guess the time was 8, I am not sure. But make sure you arrive Eagle Plains before gas station close if you want to carry on the same day. So then we 
reached almost uh, Arctic Circle, but we pulled up the hill, there was a pullout, and we stayed overnight. And um, our experience, that was the first time ever we entered the land which is called the land of midnight sun. And it was real. The video which is coming up, that was recorded just before midnight. And then I kept recording even after 1 o'clock, 1.30. Um, it was sunlight. It was real sun up in the sky. Right now, 11.53, 11th of June, 1919. We are almost at the Arctic Circle, three kilometers south to it. In a wide open area. We thought we should, we, will, we should spend night here before we head towards the Inuvik. Uh, the sun is still way above the horizon, you can see in this uh, video. And it is uh, creating a dramatic effect in our RV too. Look at this one, we had a shiny pillow and it comes, light is coming straight on it and it is reflecting to the roof. That is so interesting, wow. So everyone is trying to sleep. Here is Mithab. Here we go. <laughs> but no one wants to sleep. And I am recording a, a time lapse outside. You can see the <laughs> daylight. It's uh, 11.55 at night now. Here we go, officially we are at Arctic Circle, land of midnight sun and we have entered the Arctic. That is so amazing experience. Long days of summer contrast with the long nights of winter and on June 22nd every year sun never falls below the horizon. Landscapes are so beautiful, beyond words, hard to explain, impossible to catch with the cameras. Yes, we can do our best to capture the moment with our cameras, but it's an experience. You can try to capture whatever you can with your cameras, videos, photographs, but it's impossible to put everything into words so you have to get here to experience this amazing land entering uh, northwest territories uh, from Yukon the border is on the right pass now we are entering the northwest territories this is called the right pass here we are Entering the Northwest Territories. Wow, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. And that spot is very windy. Both times we went up and came down, it was windy all the time. And I was a little cautious about our trailer that uh, because the wind was so high both ways, 
and it was not a bad weather it was okay weather when we went through So be a little cautious about those winds, but that uh, border of Yukon and Northwest Territories, beautiful. And there is a small hike too. If even you're going towards Northwest Territories, to your left, uh, there is a small hike there. Uh, you can read that in, in the uh, Dempster Highway log. And from that point, the log starts again from kilometer zero onwards towards the Inuit. And you have to go through all those Richardson Mountains, which is the northernmost uh, uh, range of the Rocky Mountains in North America. From there, you have to cross two rivers. The first river is Peel River, which is not a huge river, but there is no river crossing other than uh, a ice road in winter or a ferry in the summertime. And uh, there is no crossing during the freezing and the breakup period uh, during uh, a fall and, uh, and the spring. Fort McPherson is a small community of about 900 people, just 12 kilometers from the Peel River crossing. It is also the home of the Fort McPherson 1010 Canvas Company. It also has uh, some uh, historic importance because it has a national historic site that is consist of the remains of Hudson Bay Company trading post as it was in 19th and early 20th century and of the post of the Royal Northwest Mounted Police as well as the existing Anglican and the Roman Catholic missions. We did a quick stop to top up the gas tank and then we left towards the Inuvik. But be careful between Fort McPherson, that is kilometer 86 on the Dempster Highway on Northwest Territory side to kilometer 142, that is Mackenzie River Crossing. That section is full of loose gravel. If you slow down for the oncoming traffic, you might save your windshield. Actually, we lost our uh, RV window glass completely on our way back. And do not get surprised if you come across a lot of spruce and other trees around Fort McPherson because Mackenzie River provides appropriate soil and climate for those trees to grow there naturally. When you go across the Peel River, the next biggest river, mighty Mackenzie, that is the largest river on this, uh, on this journey. You have to cross it by a ferry um, because there is no river crossing for that river as well. In the winter time, same thing, ice road, and in the summertime, a ferry. You cannot cross that river uh, during the fall at the freezing time and during the spring during the ice breakup. After crossing the Mackenzie River, Inuvik is not too far. And uh, when we reached Inuvik, we again got on the paved road and Inuvik has only one traffic light. And when you enter the town, first is the airport and then uh, you reach that big huge sign. It says, end of Dempster Highway. So we stayed in a Happy Valley campground in, uh, uh, in Inuvik. This town has almost everything you can imagine hospital, recreation centers, a, a, a bigger nursery, shopping uh, shopping malls, uh, whatever you need for your living, they have it and it is very well established, established town. Uh, they have about uh, 3,400 population of that town. Next morning, we wake up and we decided to hit the Arctic Ocean because uh, it was going to rain the next day, so we thought we should do it the uh, day before.
a very unique road which will take you 150 kilometers from Enovek to Taktaytak. Kids enjoyed it, we enjoyed it, we kept stopping along the way and then uh, when we hit that sign Arctic Ocean and that was the northern edge of the earth. We can't believe it, we made it there. So that was a good feeling. Then we did that uh, ritual of uh, dipping your toe in the Arctic Ocean. They will give you a certificate that you officially dipped your toe in the Arctic Ocean. Interesting part is where that sign is, Arctic Ocean, just a couple of hundred meters from there, there is another sign which says Trans Canada Trail. That is the sign, that is the landmark where Trans Canada, Canada Trail begins. So we took our pictures, we spent almost full day there. Another interesting part uh, of that small community is uh, they have penguins. Penguins uh, is very interesting structure. It is a uh, ice mass covered with the earth and they are up to 70 meter high. They have a viewing platform. We enjoyed them from uh, that viewing platform. You can see them in the distance. That is very interesting thing because those things we don't see up on uh, west coast here or any other coast because they are specifically in that area because frozen ice is kind of popped up and then it's covered by the earth. Also, uh, their houses are made above from the ground and even their sewer system is uh, above the ground because they cannot dig down uh, into the land because it is frozen 24 hours 7 for 12 months a year. So there is no digging and another interesting fact about that region is uh, there are no trees at all. Like if there are any trees, they will not be taller than myself I guess and they will be just in small bunches and when you look at them they look like a bush but that is not a bush it could be a two or three hundred years old tree it cannot have big roots so that's why it does not grow very tall so that is also you need time to experience all those things so when you're trying to if you're trying to make that journey then do not rush it take your time so that was that is the part of our journey. That's what I wanted to share with you guys. So I hope that will motivate some, some of you so you guys can make it all the way to the Arctic Ocean. And on this trip, we never ended just uh, by touching the northern edge of the earth. On the way back, we went to Karkaros Desert. That is also the world's smallest desert. And uh, we also went to Hyder, Alaska. And most interesting part is uh, Salmon Glacier which is the fifth largest glacier of uh, North America. So keep following us. I am going to be putting all my experiences up here uh, in coming months. So I know I am slow, but you know, like I work full time as well. So this is my hobby. I love to share my work, my travels, and uh, I want to motivate everyone out there because we got this opportunity to live on this beautiful earth. 
why not explore it? So that's my goal. Please do not forget to subscribe and see you in the next episode. Thank you for watching.